What up guys, JP back at you once again, bringing you guys another Top 10 Tuesday Christmas edition. That's right, this time we are doing my top Christmas horror films. I love holiday horror, and more specifically, I love Christmas horror. It is probably my favorite holiday that you can use in a horror film, and it's simply because Christmas is supposed to be so positive, and horror films are supposed to be so negative, so it's an interesting contrast there. Before we get into the list, there are a lot of Christmas films that I still have not seen, such as Don't Open Till Christmas, uh, that IFC one, Saint Nick, I think there's one called Saint. There's a handful of them that I've still yet to see, but I'm slowly crossing them off my list, and I will continue to do so, but out of the ones that I've seen, these are my top 10. I had a little bit of a rough time with the order and sort of the 9, 10 spot because I didn't want to leave some certain ones off, but unfortunately I had to. Another thing, I was going to include stuff like An All Through the House, which is the Tells from the Crypt episode, and maybe Tree Venge, but I decided to shy away from that and only include feature length films, so that's all I stuck to. With that said, let's jump into my top 10 Christmas horror films. First up, we have the number 10 spot goes to Santa Slay. Now, I debated on what I should put here, and I ended up going with Santa Slay. It's a film that I really was unexpectedly charmed by. I, I really didn't expect to like this one, because Bill Goldberg as Santa Claus just, it seemed a little too cheesy for me. But it ends up being really fun, and you know right at the beginning of the film exactly what you're getting yourself into. And I think if you can accept the type of film that it is, and the film definitely does a great job, of letting you know that right away then you can enjoy this one it is a lot of fun it's over the top it's ridiculous it's funny cheesy but it also is very charming in in its storytelling the way that they kind of make it this over the top ridiculousness uh, Christmas horror film I mean this this ox that he, <laughs> he has attached to his sleigh I mean it's it's ridiculous I grabbed this one for three dollars at a used DVD store and I'm happy I did because it's definitely one that um, I will revisit over time because it is just nuts and I love that about it I'm not the biggest fan of these type of films these over the top ridiculous films but this one definitely I did enjoy so Santa sleigh coming in at number 10 Coming in at number 9, we have A Cadaver Christmas. They're not zombies, they're cadavers. You hear that line over and over again in the film. It's uh, one of the many jokes. Joe Zarell directed this, and I believe it is a horror film made by a horror fan because this guy actually hosts a podcast. I think it's Attack of the Killer podcast. I'm not sure if he's still a host of it, but I did listen to it back in the day, and I did very much enjoy it. Don't know why I really stopped listening to it, but, I mean, it's a, it's a great... Uh, Christmas horror film, uh, low budget, done right, uh, comedy, zomcom, set on Christmas. It's fun. It's it's not as over the top as Santa Slay, but it definitely has its moments. It's pure comedy, not much horror in it, but it's it's a blast. I had a lot of fun with it. The Chris the, the cover is really really cool. Grab this for five dollars on Amazon. You can still grab this super cheap. It actually sold pretty well considering it didn't have a huge push by any type of studio or anything, and I, it's actually released by a company that I never even um, heard of or have another release from and that's level 33 entertainment so Cadaver Christmas coming in at number nine check it out number eight we have Black Xmas and this one right here is one that I think a lot of people hate I like it because although it is a remake of the classic Black Christmas and it's not really a good remake if you take it as a standalone film, you kind of disconnect yourself from how good the original one is. It's a pretty solid Christmas horror film, especially in what we've seen over the past few years. There's not really a whole lot of Christmas horror anymore, and none that are really serious. And this film plays itself very serious. I actually like the atmosphere in it. I like the the characters they use. They're smoking hot girls in the sorority house. Uh, I love that about it. It has one of the most beautiful casts ever. And it's a film that I go back to a lot because I had such a great time with it when it came out. It was at an interesting time in my life where I spent so much time, you know, just partying and hanging out with friends. And for some reason, we always popped this one in all winter long when it was released. And I have a fond memories of that. The film itself has problems. It's a little ridiculous. The plot line is kind of stupid, and there's definitely plot holes in it. But for a serious horror film, Christmas... 
it, it's what it's what I look for in Christmas horror. I know my first two on the list were sort of comedies and stuff, but I really do love the serious Christmas horror film, and for that reason, this makes number eight on my list. Coming in at number seven is actually a film that I don't own because it's it's hard to get a hold of, and it is Elves. It actually does not have a DVD release, and it's only had a VHS release, and it's actually quite hard to get a hold of, I believe, still. And there are bootleg sites, which I would like to eventually grab a bootleg, just because I love this film because how ridiculous it is. Ridiculous it is. I seen this uh, a few years ago on YouTube actually, and I've always wanted to kind of revisit it because it was just so bizarre. It was such a bizarre film. I mean, the opening has a. Uh, little brother spying on his little sister and she gets pissed off and she was naked and he's like I don't care you have nice tits and I want to see him or something along those lines and you're just like what and then it starts getting into all this like Nazi history with these elves and there's this guy like grizzly man or something it's just out there man and it needs a release I would love somebody to pick it up somebody like Synapse or or uh, Scream Factor, or any of those companies. Vinegar Syndrome, this seems like a great title for them. I would love to see somebody pick it up. It, I don't know who owns the rights to it, but somebody needs to find out and somebody needs to release this thing because it needs a release. It's so bizarre. So, Elves, uh, next up we have number six, which is uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. I know a lot of people are thinking, what? What the hell? Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2? Hear me out. It is a bad film. I am very well aware of this. I think I gave it like a 3 out of 10 for my rating, or maybe even lower. It's terrible. It's, it's not even a whole movie, right? The, the first portion of the film, a main chunk of the film, is just flashback scenes from the original. And at face value, this film is just awful. But if you see it a few times and you really start to pay attention to it, it is definitely one of those so bad it's good. The pure acting that this guy does, this Ricky character, I mean, it's it's some of the most bizarre acting ever. There's like eyebrow counters, like this film has this famous garbage day line. I mean, it's it has so many funny moments to it, unintentionally funny moments. There's like a moment where the doctor asks him how he remembers all this and he was like cuz I was there although he was just a little ass baby I mean it's so ridiculous it's so ridiculous I love it for that reason and it's actually it legitimately is one of my favorite Christmas horror movies because of how bizarre and retarded the whole film is it's just it's just one of these films that like I I don't like So Bad It's Good that much. I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't have many films that I really go to for that, but this, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, this is one of those films. It's one of those films that I really, truly do enjoy at that So Bad It's Good level. And, I mean, honestly, the first film is such a great film that flashbacks of it, I mean, at least it's taken a lot of good scenes. Um, so, coming in at number five, we have Christmas Evil. And this is a film that I just first seen maybe a year ago, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. I thought that it was uh, much bigger, uh, much more complex than you expect out of a film that has a cover like this, with this uh, killer Santa Claus on the cover holding a knife. You don't expect that to be a very complex narrative, and and it and it really is. It deals with a lot of um, like sort of. Uh, mental issues with the main character and I loved it. I thought it was great. I, I was really really into it. 1980 classic stuff. Vinegar Syndrome put out this Blu-ray. I highly recommend grabbing it. It is a lot of fun and it is definitely one of the better made Christmas horror movies. So coming in at number five we have Christmas Evil. Next up number four we have Dead End. Now this is probably the only film on my list that isn't a direct Christmas film. It's not filled with Christmas vibe, but it does sort of have that Christmas vibe. There's not snow or there's not a whole lot of uh, nods to Christmas, but the idea that this family is all packed into their car and they're traveling on this deep dark uh, road that just goes on forever to go to a fa another family member's house for Christmas Eve, that to me, it, like kind of makes it really have that Christmas feel because a lot of people do that and it, it 
I remember getting into the car and the whole family going to another family member's house. Like, it has that vibe to it. And I love that about it, but I also just love how creepy and just odd. It's just one of those films that has this uh, eerie vibe to it. You know, it's just an eerie movie. And I, it, it's really cool. The wonderful Lynn Shea is in this as well. Super, super fun. Very underrated. It's one of my films that I always recommend people because of uh, how cool it is. So, breaking into the top three, we have... Silent Night, Deadly Night. This is a classic. I love this film. Siskel and Ebert bashed the hell out of it. It has like this famous, infamous history where uh, the film was pulled from theaters. Parents were outraged at depicting Santa Claus with an axe going down a chimney. Siskel and Ebert gave out the phone number of the people who were involved in the film. Uh, making the film on their TV show at the movies, gave it out to anybody, so and you know said shame on you, shame on you to uh, list it off the you know credits. I mean, it it made a huge splash, and unfortunately, it actually hurt the film quite bad. It, it didn't really recover. It is a cult film, but it didn't make any money, and you know it. <laughs> it, it's interesting that uh, a film that is so widely known now kind of bombed in terms of dollars because it was pulled from the cinemas and it really was just kind of, uh, you know, how they say no publicity is bl bad pub publicity. That's necessarily not true because it, the publicity of this film, the negative publicity kind of killed this one. Uh, but I love it. It's great. From the one of the first scenes where you see the grandfather... Uh, break character where he was supposed to be in this catatonic state and he says you know Christmas is the scariest damn time of the year if you see Santa Claus you better run boy that is classic it's creepy uh, and then it's just great from there just great from then on I mean the classic Linnea Quigley death scene this is a great DVD by the way because it does have the uncut footage I'm not sure if the blu-ray does Silent Night Deadly Night awesome Coming in at number two, we have Black Christmas, the classic. Now, this was in a battle with Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, or Silent Night, Deadly Night, for the uh, number one spot, and I had to I had to give the nod to Black Christmas. It's, it's really the uh, first big one. It's not the first, but it is the first big one. Uh, it's one that, you know, it's just so damn good. It's such a good movie, and the ending is great, and... The setting is great, and the Christmas vibe is great, and the characters are great. I love Olivia Hussey. The killer is great. Uh, it's just one of those great films that has inspired other films that came after after it. So, so good. I love Black Christmas. I really would like to get a copy of that new Blu-ray just because uh, I love this film that much. So, that is Black Christmas coming in at number two. And coming in at number one might surprise a lot of people, and really it's... Probably not the best Christmas horror film, but it is my favorite because of the nostalgic reasons, and that is Gremlins. I watched this so much as a kid, and it's literally one of my favorite horror films of all time. I watch it, or at least I try to watch it every Christmas. Every Christmas I pop this baby in if I can, and just love it. I just love it. I really want the Blu-ray just so I could kind of re- uh, discover it, you know, it gives me an excuse to watch it again, see what it looks like in HD. Uh, I love Zach Galligan's character, I love Gizmo, I love the Gremlins, I love how it's so violent yet comic book violence almost. It's really cool, man. It, it, it has the greatest Christmas vibe, it has that creepy ass story about her dad dying, climbing down the chimney. There's so many great scenes in this film, and I love it. I love Gremlins. So that is my top 10 Christmas horror films. I hope you guys enjoyed. I also thought about, you know, like I said, throwing in other uh, types of uh, short films and episodes and stuff. Woodland Critters Christmas is definitely kind of up there. It's very dark, satanic and stuff, uh, the South Park episode. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the video. So see you guys next time. Peace.